Hi everyone, my name is Renita and I'm going to be one of your Econometrics TAs this semester. Feel free to send me an email if you have any questions or concerns in the class, but let's go ahead and get started. And today we're going to cover our difference in difference asynchronous learning example from our lecture. Specifically, we're going to start with Cardin Kruger. And if you want to recall the context of this example, it's from their 1994 paper dealing with full time employment and minimum wage. And in this paper, they utilize the fact that there was an increase in state minimum wage in New Jersey that didn't occur in Pennsylvania, yet there's only one arbitrary line dividing the two states. This is really important because w when we're looking at a difference in difference technique, we want our treated units and untreated units to be very similar. We want the only difference to be the treatment in order to really draw the difference or the impact of treatment on our outcome. So we want our population, you know, age of the population, race, um, unemployment rates, and other covariates depending on the research question to be very similar. So that's why this example is very important. So the first thing we're going to start off with is we're going to clear everything in our Stata window. We're going to set our working directory to where our data is located on, on our machine and then we're going to load in the data. So when you load in the data, you want to go to the data browser and just check out what the variables are and how they're composed. So for instance, New Jersey is 0, 1, which is known to be a dummy or indicator variable, meaning if New Jersey is a 0, that means it's not New Jersey, it's Pennsylvania. If New Jersey is a 1, that means it is New Jersey. For the location. FTE is full-time employment, which is a continuous variable. Time is determining our treatment time. If it's 0, that means it's pre-treatment period. If it's 1, that means it's post-treatment period. State wage is another continuous variable with the amount of the state wage. Sample is really important for us here. So one thing that's important when you're looking at this difference in difference design is to make sure you have a balanced sample in the sense that you're comparing units that we have data for in the pretreatment period and we also have their data for them in the post-treatment period. So in this case, when sample equals one, that means that we have data for them in the pre and the post-treatment period. So we're going to be subsetting our data set in our regressions to whenever sample is equal to one. And these other variables here are just covariates or controls that may be of interest to us, maybe not. We're going to talk about that later on. So we can close this for now. And we visually inspected the data. The next thing would be to summarize the data in order to inspect it in greater detail. We can use a subcommand detail. And what this is going to do is give us the percentiles to understand the dispersion of the data and the key statistics such as your average standard deviation, variance, skewness, and kurtosis. And so this is going to give us an idea of the majority of what we're looking at. And once we've kind of taken a look at this, we can start running our first manual difference in difference. So our first goal is to estimate pretreatment differences of full-time employment. We're going to run a regression. Our dependent variable is going to be full-time employment. We're going to use New Jersey, which is our indicator of whether the state is New Jersey or Pennsylvania. And we're going to do if time equals zero, our pretreatment period, and we want sample equal to one because we want to only look at the data that exists in the pre and the post treatment. We're going to use comma R here, and that's in terms of our standard errors. We're going to assume heteroscedasticity in standard errors. So unless you can somehow assure that there's homoscedasticity in your standard errors, you want to always be using this comma R. There are different ways to um, group and cluster and look at our standard errors that we're going to be covering later on as well. So after we run this regression, we're going to want to store the coefficient. And you can call it anything. 
So SCA stands for scalar, that's the command. DO, that's the name that I chose to store it. And we're going to do underscore B, that represents the beta coefficient. And we're going to pick the beta coefficient New Jersey, that's the only one we want. We're going to run this command, and here we get New Jersey coefficient negative 2.8. So let's take a second and just think about how we're going to interpret this. So this is the only coefficient and the only variable in our regression, but if we had other variables, we would start off, right? All is constant. Being in New Jersey compared to if one was in Pennsylvania has a negative 2.838 impact on full-time employment. And we're going to store that coefficient. Now we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to do if time is equal to 1, which is the post-treatment period. And again, we're going to do sample equals to 1, comma, r. And we're just going to store d1. This is the post difference, New Jersey. So our first difference of being in New Jersey versus when you're in Pennsylvania, post treatment, is negative 0.536 for full-time employment. So full-time employment is less likely post-treatment compared to if you were in Pennsylvania. We're going to store that. And then we're going to use the display command dis d1 minus d0 to get the difference in difference. And we get 2.3. So now we can try doing this automatically. The key here is to realize that the treatment effects is the difference of difference because of dummy coding. And we're going to create our dummy coded interaction term here by doing generate New Jersey underscore time, you can name it anything, is New Jersey times time. So I'm going to take a minute to think about what this means. 0, 1, New Jersey. If it's 1, that means the state is New Jersey. If it's 0, that means it's Pennsylvania. It's the other untreated unit. And time is 0, 1. If it's a 0, that means it's the pretreatment. If it's 1, that means it's the treatment period. So the only time New Jersey times time is going to be equal to 1 is going to be when the state is New Jersey, so meaning they have the, the minimum wage law in effect, and it's in the treatment period. And so here we can run our regression using our newly created interaction terms. We want New Jersey time, and then our interaction New Jersey time. We want to write when sample or if sample is equal to 1 comma r again. So we can try running that. Okay, and here we get our results. So for interpretation purposes, we would say holding all else constant, being in New Jersey at the time or after the time of treatment compared to if you're in Pennsylvania without the treatment you have a 2.3 times more likelihood of full-time employment. And here, I'm going to show you there's another way to run this. Last regression. Instead of generating your own variable, what you can do is do a regression, full-time employment, New Jersey, double hashtag time. Still do if sample equals 1 comma r. So the double hashtag basically tells you that you want not only just the interaction of New Jersey and time, you want New Jersey and time individually as well. So let's just run this and see what we get. We get New Jersey, we get time, and we get New Jersey times time. And we're going to get the exact same results, it's just the way we wrote it is different. Now for consistency, I'm just going to write double hashtag 
gives the interaction. And individual variables. But in terms of storing regressions, I want us to store this first regression using Outrug2. So if you don't have Outrug2 already installed on your machine, you can do SSC install Outrug2. The purpose of Outrug2 is to create a publishable table for either your research projects, your problem sets, um, or any other reason that you'd need one. <laughs> And we're going to use outreg2 using, and you want to name the document, so card.txt. And you want to always start with comma replace. And we can add other subcommands here. We could write heap, which we could do if we only wanted one coefficient. Let's say we just want New Jersey underscore time. Um, we could do that, but we're not going to do that for this one. Another thing we can do is our column title. We can just put DD for difference and difference, and that's what the title of the column will be. And we can run this command. So now that we've done this and we've seen a couple ways of running it, let's actually see what would happen if we add some covariates. So if you're following your asynchronous learning PDF, you will see somewhere in the slides questions regarding what would happen if we add a covariate of the chain of the restaurant or whether the restaurant was co-owned or not co-owned. So we're going to try to look at what adding these covariates would do to our results and if it will change anything. You want to think about these kinds of questions when you're doing your own research because it's not always best to control for everything you want to think very conscientiously of what's actually going to have an impact on your design. So first thing we want to do is just tabulate our chain, tabulate our co-owned to see the composure, sorry, composition of these two variables. So we have four chains and our frequency shows that the majority proportionally is in our first chain and then for co-owned there's actually more restaurants that are not co-owned, zero, so no co-owned. So now we're going to run a regression, full-time employment, New Jersey, time, and New Jersey underscore time. We're going to do I dot co own and I dot chain if sample equals one comma R. Why are we doing I dot? I dot represents indicator. So we're saying that co-owned is an indicator because it's categorical and so is chain because it's zero one. And we can do outreg two using again our card.txt. But now we want to use append. And we can name this column title co for covariates. So let's run this and see if we see any differences. Okay, so if we want to compare this with our previous output. First, let me store this by running outreg2. Let us rerun this regression. Okay. New Jersey, it's looking slightly different. Mostly the same. Time is looking the exact same. The variable of interest, which is our interaction, New Jersey time, is the exact same. So our variable of interest, which is the interaction, did not change by adding the covariates, whether a restaurant was co-owned or whether it was a part of a chain, which means that they're actually not important to add in our model. Now, why is that the case? You only want to add variables that would change over time. And so in our sample, the restaurants did not go from being co-owned to not co-owned. They didn't change their co-ownership over time between the pre and the post treatment. The chain, the type of chain of restaurant also didn't change. So because there wasn't any heterogeneity in changes in terms of pre and post, it actually is not beneficial for us to control 
for whether it was a co-owned or chain restaurant. The whole point of controls in difference and difference modeling is to absorb or take out all the different variations that are changing at the time of implementation of treatment that could be explaining our outcome or our results that does not have to do with the treatment. It's some outsider factor that's also changing at the same time that's actually influencing our outcome. But since there's no change here, we don't want to add co-owner chain. Okay, so now we're going to start our second example for this difference in difference section. And this example is more recent from our Cardin Kruger one. This is the one referenced in your difference in difference chapter from the causal inference mixtape. And Scott Cunningham talks about this Craigslist paper where they're looking at the introduction of a web um, service, erotic services page that's listed on their Craigslist services uh, at different points of time at different locations. And this is a paper with Greg and uh, Scott and they're looking at the impact of the implementation of this page on Craigslist on female homicide rates and they end up finding that female homicide rates have a reduction during the time of this um, erotic services webpage on Craigslist because of Many reasons, which you can read more about in the paper, but some of the reasons are the ability for um, these sex workers to move out from the outdoor marketplace to indoor marketplace, which could increase safety as well as being able to screen their um, clients. And so we're going to take a look at the data from this paper and see if we can run some of the regressions. And just to get make a note here that this isn't the most recent code for the paper so there may be some discrepancies but we're going to make edits along the way so that it reflects almost the same as what the paper shows in terms of results and we're going to start with clearing off our window so i just cleared off my window here and by clear by this clear i'm going to be clearing any data sets that may be open right now by capture log close I'm just closing any log files that may be open set more off is just an option to not be able to see the more see more option and set matrix size this one's important so if you're dealing with a really big data set and you're going to be running um, different models with interactions you may have uh, a very large matrix size for your results window and because I have state of 15 and the IC edition, the largest I can set my matrix size is 800, but if you have a newer state of version or not an IC but the different other versions, you could probably set it to larger. So you could probably do help map size to take a look at um, what you're able to set your matrix size to depending on what kind of version you have. And then we're going to set our working directory to where this data is located. We're going to import our, import our first data set from Excel. And it's going to be ag name represents city name, state name, and then we have ERS state, which is the introduction of ERS on Craigslist. Then we're going to reformat our date variable because as you see, there's slashes here to represent our date and that's not how Stata is able to interpret the date as a date variable. So we're going to generate a year, which is basically taking the year from that slash date and then breaking it apart to two variables, year and month. So we're generating a variable month, we're taking the month out of ERS date. Then we're dropping our entire date that has the date as well. Now we're going to reformat it and in order to reformat you can look at help dates for more documentation but it's a year month date so we're going to put year month and then we're going to put the variable names year month and then to format it into a date variable we have to do the percent tm and there's different formats based on whether you you're going to have quarterly data or monthly data or even daily data and here we see after we do the percent tm we get our year and our month concatenate it together. Now we're only going to keep these variables city name, state name, and the date, and then we're also going to sort our city state. 
So sort is just an alphabetical sorting of the first variable you've listed. So we've listed city name. So it's going to sort alphabetically our city name. The reason why we want to also put state name is to tell Stata that these are corresponding variables in the sense that our city is attached to a corresponding state. And if we just sort on city, we may not also have the attached state name with it. And that would be bad because then we would have a city like Abilene with Ohio, and then these two are actually not attached. So you want to put sort your city that's going to be alph uh, alphabetized and then the state that corresponds so that they stick together. And now we're going to use a temp file and temp files are used to reduce the, your space on your hard drive. And what that means is that you, once you use it in your do file, it's going to be deleted. And so it's not going to be stored as a data set that you can use over and over again. Every time you run this do file, though, it's going to create the temp file. And you want to put comma replace so that in the future, if we want to make another temp file with this name, we can just replace it. And if there already exists a temp file with this name, because we've been running this do file many times, maybe we want to re replace it with this new do file. So we're saving that. And now we're going to import a new data set that's also an Excel spreadsheet. And this one is the Craigslist state, your state name, and your city name. And we're going to use this substring command, which you may be familiar with, maybe not. But let's take a look at what it does. So substring is going to first put in the variable that you want to substring then put in the placement at which you want to start your substringing and then the end placement. So what that means is CL date, I'm going to go to the sixth placement. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the beginning of the year. And I'm going to end at the fourth placement, which is the end, end of the year. And so it's going to basically make a variable that starts at the sixth placement, ends at the, at the fourth after that. So it's basically just taking out the year. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the month. And if you notice here, the month is actually in a string format. And so we're going to have to change that later on so that it matches our other data set. And so we're going to create the temp variable with the months that started at the third position, one, two, three, and ended three letters after, three placements after. So one, two, three. So it's ending here. So now we have our month and our year, and we're going to have to change our character string month into the numeric format by generating month equals to one if the temp double equals January. So we're going to put double equals for when um, there is a value in the variable that's equal to that amount. So if we wanted to do that for year, you know, we could do gen year one equals one if year double equals 1995. So the double equals is for when we're calling a value in the variable. If you have a dummy coded variable zero one, then you would put generate dummy equals one if temp double equals one. So use a double equals for when it's equivalent to a value in the variable. So we're going to run this and we get this month variable. And now we can destring year and we're going to replace it. So now year is going to change from a string to a numeric value. And we're going to replace it, which means that instead of creating a new year variable, like year two, we're just going to replace our already existing year variable with the numeric version of it. And then we're going to drop our temp, which was the character months, and then our CL date, which was this format that has the day, month, year. And now we're going to actually generate a date variable similar to the one that we did prior in our data set so that we can be able to merge it and have it consistent. That's going to be in the data format year, month. And now we only want to keep the city, the state, and the CL date. So if you see here on the command window, it's everything that we've been doing. 
is showing here. And we're going to sort again city and state. Now we're going to save our CL date temp, so another temporary file. And replace, put comma replace in case for some reason it's already existing in our working directory. And we're going to switch back to our raw temp file. And as you see, the data set changes to what we had prior. And now this is really important. I want to focus a little bit on this merge command. So when we have two sets of data, we're going to want to merge it into one data set. And we've made the dates consistent. And we know that we have city states that are repeating, right? Because at different dates, we may have that city state. So it could be, you know, year 1995, month three, we have a city state. But again, year 1996, month four, whatever it may be, we have that same city state in our data set. So we're going to want to use the many to many command if that happens, because in the data set that we just loaded the raw, that's going to be considered our master data set. And if we have repeating city state combinations, we want to use many because there's many of the city state. And then our using data set is the one that we put after this using. That's going to be the CL date, the one that we were just working on. And we're also going to put many there because there could be repeating city state combinations based on the time period. And so here I've kind of written out that it could be the case that you're just trying to maybe merge like a key file that has like the state names or something uh, or the acronym state names. If you don't want to go hand in hand and type each one out, and then it could be the case that you're using data has many repeating but your key file that only has your state name listed once is go gonna only have one of that. So you could put many to one. And so it'll know that your using file will only have one iteration of that state name. Or it could be your master file only has one of that state or city state combination and your using file has it re repeated. And so you want to kind of pay attention to what your data looks like in terms of the data that you're merging on. So here we're merging on city state combination. You can merge it on uh, whatever is appropriate for your problem or research question. So we're just going to now merge this. And it's saying invalid specification because this needs to be dot temp. And let's try it again. OK, it worked. And so if we pay attention here, we got 482 that were matched, city states, two that were not matched. And those two that were not matched, they come from the using. So they came from CL date, so Craigslist date. And so we only want to care about and run our analysis on the match data that exists in both data sets. So we're only going to keep if underscore merge double equals three, right? This one. And if you want to take a look at it, it'll tell you it matched three means it matched both data sets. And you can scroll down and see maybe you find this one was only existing in the using data set, but not in the master. So it's going to drop those two. So we keep if merge underscore merge equals three. So we deleted those two observations. And now it's really important that you want to drop that underscore merge variable that we just saw. It's important to drop this because if you don't drop it, then you'll never be able to merge in a new data set. You're going to get an error message because every time you merge a data set, it's going to create an underscore merge variable. And so it's really important to drop it as soon as you're done merging. That way later on, when you merge in a new data set, you don't have to deal with that error message at that time. And then again, we're going to sort through city and state name. And now we're going to save raw.temp and replace. So if you noticed up here, we already used our raw file. So once we used it up here, it got deleted. And now we can make a new raw.temp, which is basically the merged files. And now we can use our third data set, which is for murders 
for our dependent variable that we're looking at. And so we can take a look at what it looks like. So it has our month, it has our year, our city name, state name, date, and a bunch of different other um, covariates, control variables that are listed in here. So we're going to store sort on our city state and then we're going to merge we're going to merge our city state using the raw.temp so that merged file that we just created we're going to merge that in and we're going to only keep if merge double equals 3 and then we're going to drop underscore merge. So we can take a look first to see what it looks like. You don't have to pay too much attention into all of those different variables. Only some are going to be used for our specifications of interest. But we have our ERS date, our CL date, and underscore merge. So again, we're going to keep only if underscore merge equals 3 and drop the underscore merge variable. So 80 observations were deleted. So now we're going to collapse by sum these variables of interest. So male all, female all, population, female strangle, female white, black, Asian. And this is the important thing to realize. You're going to sum it based on some key variable. So we're summing grouped by the year, month, date, city, and state name. So what that means is that we're going to sum, for instance, mail all on a specific year, so let's say 1995, and a specific month, we'll say January, so it'll be the same as um, 1995 M1 for January in a specific city, so we can say Abilene, in a specific state, Texas. So it's going to sum up all the instances that M all occurs in that time period for that city state. And so the generic command for collapse is sum, but you can also put mean here. You can put help collapse if you want more documentation on it. But it's a good idea to put in sum or mean, whatever you plan to do here. And it's up to you, depending on your research question, whether you think it's more appropriate to take an average or a sum. So we've done that. Now we're going to run this for loop that will create per capita measure indexed by each observation. So for each x of the variable list, f all, f acquaintance, m all, f white, f black, all of these, generate an x underscore pc, so per capita, equals x divided by population times 100,000. So we're basically doing per capita, like looking at female, all females in the population, well, per 100,000 in the population, all the female acquaintance homicides per 100,000 in the population. So per 100,000 in the population is used to kind of give the reader some ability to understand how frequent these specific variables or statistics are occurring. Um, many researchers use per 100,000, but it depends on how big your unit of interest is. If you're looking at a, a smaller city or samples consisted of smaller units, you may want to do per 10,000. It just depends on what you think, but per 100,000 is pretty common in literature. And we're indexing it on x because that basically just means for each x of var variable list. So we're saying for each value in the variable list of these ones, make this 
per capita variable. And so we can run this for loop and see what it looks like. So we made f underscore unknown underscore PC, this one. So for female unknown homicides per capita, it's going to be 0.448 per 100,000 in the population. So for each of these variables, we created a per capita rate in each of these cells, basically for each of these city-state combinations. And so by doing the for loop, it's an easy way of creating the per capita all in one go instead of gen generating it manually for each one. You can practice more with the for loop and it should make it easier over time. I definitely recommend it to decrease the load on yourself when you're doing these types of codes. And now let's go over um, this egen command. So we, we've been using generate a lot. And egen is for when we're making more advanced of a variable. And uh, for instance, now we're going to use the group with the egen. So group is when we want to make a unique identifier, like one, two, three, four, grouping two variables. So I want that for, suppose Abilene, Texas, a unique identifier, like a number one. So every time I see Abilene, Texas in my data set, no matter if it's repeated based on the time period, it should always be an ID equal to one. And if I see a new city state combination, I'm going to have a different ID. And you're going to have to do that, create this grouping variable every time you're going to XT set or time series set your data for fixed effects because you're going to want an ID and a time when you're setting your data for fixed effects regressions. So I created my ID and we're going to use time series set. You can use either time series set or XT set with our, we always want to use our location or ID unit first, and then our time unit afterwards. So that's going to be date is our time, which was a month year combination. And here it shows that it's unbalanced. So what that means is that there's some gaps in our data. We don't have um, every single year month filled for each ID. That's okay though. Um, so now we're going to by sort ID and create a population mean, which is mean population. So by sort ID means we're going to do for each ID, like ID equals one, we're going to create a population mean taking the mean of the population variable. And then we're going to replace population equal to a dot if population equals zero. Remember we have the double equals because it'll actually equal to zero in that variable. So another thing, like right now I was looking for population and I have no idea where it is because there's so many different variables. We can press or type in order pop so that that shows up the first variable in our data set so that I don't have to go searching for it. So if you ever want to reorganize your data set so that you can find the variables, just press the order command or type it in. And so Right off the bat, I'm not seeing any population equal to zero, but basically what this is saying that is for each ID, create a population mean, taking the mean of the population and then replacing a dot if the population, like these cells, any of them equals zero. And here we're going to, again, sort by ID and generate a difference and it's going to be the population of my current cell minus the previous lagged cell. So that means I'm going to take, suppose, this one and subtract it by this one. But remember, we're doing it, yeah, we're doing it based on the lag. So if we're doing it based on the lag, that means that this first value that we create in this diff variable should be a dot or a dash. It shouldn't exist because there's no lag for the first one. So let's run those and see what happens. So again, I'm not going to scroll all the way over. I'm just going to press order diff 
and I'll also order ID. I can also pick what order I want it in. I could do order ID, month, year, pop, diff. So it's gonna be in that order. And my difference here is gonna be a dot because remember there's no lagged variable because there's no time equals zero. There's just time equals one. And then these are all zero because the differences are zero here. That means the prior period was the same population as the post, but here there's a difference in the population. And then I'm going to do more by sorts. I'm going to create a ratio, which is going to be the difference divided by the population mean. And then I'm going to by sort ID replace population equals dot if the ratio is less than negative 0.5 and then equals dot if the ratio is less than 0 0.1 and the ratio is greater than negative 0 0.1. All of these are just based on your research question and your preferences, creating these things. Um, I think it's more important to understand what this code does than necessarily um, the minute details of why we decided to make the ratio, make it a dot if the ratio was less than these values. So if you can understand the code, that's mo most important is what I'm trying to say. And now let's look at this TS fill full command. So remember I had mentioned that it's unbalanced our ID, meaning there's missing dates for each city state. And it says but with gaps. When we use TS fill full, what we're doing is is we're creating an empty month year value for the missing data. So for ID one, Abilene, Texas, there was no data for January nineteen ninety five. But other city states have data for January 1995. So in order to balance our um, time series set or our data set, we can use TS fill full to create empty columns for when all the data isn't existing. And that'll help us later on to make sure we're not grouping things incorrectly. And we can try this again. So we can comment this out for now. This is a capture and drop treat times ERS. We don't have that in our data set. So we're not going to worry about it too much right now. And we're going to by sort our ID and replace our city name with the city name from our lag value. If the city name is, this is empty space. So when you're trying to say that there, there's nothing that exists in that cell, you just put two quotation marks. And so what that means is, remember we just did TS fill. So we created all of these empty values. So for instance, there's no city state name. We're basically saying fill in these empty values with the prior city state name there. And we're allowed to do that because we know that all of the IDs are going to be sorted together. ID equals one is going to be all together. ID equals two is going to be all together. And we use by sort ID. So we're not having it replace the prior city or state or the following city or state if it's ID two. It's only going to look at ID one. And so we're basically just filling in our city states here. all those empty values and so now we have the names of the city states for all of those TS fill new spaces that we created and we're gonna drop the year month so that's gone 
Now we're going to generate year equals year of date and then date of month, date. So all of these nitty gritty um, specifications in this code, you can always put help dates to kind of understand when you would use all of this. But basically, it's just saying that we have our date variable and it, we want it's in the date of month format and we want to create it in a year of date format. And we're going to name that year. And so we can put order year to better understand what that looks like. And it looks like this. So we're just looking at the year. Then we're going to store our ID and date. So now we have year, the first year in our data set, first ID in our data set. And now we're going to by sort ID year generate month equals underscore N. So underscore n is just like an index. So basically for every ID and every year combination, we're going to create a month based on every single combination that exists. So ID one year one or 1995. So let's see what that looks like. And we can order month to the beginning. And it's basically saying that for every year ID combination, we're going to generate month, which is going to be equal to every underscore N index, which creates our 12 months. And now we're going to buy store ID and replace ERS date with its lag. And this one is replacing it with its lead. So when we replace something with the future time period, it's called a lead. When we replace it with our past time period, it's called a lag. And it's by lag of one unit and lead of one unit. If we did minus two, it'd be lag by two units or lead by two units. So we're filling in our data again because remember when we used TS fill, we basically created a whole bunch of empty data. And now we're going to fill it with the data that's right around it, right neighboring that data point. And now we're going to, uh, so there's interpolate and extrapolate. And we're going to interpolate what our population and date would look like. Grouping by each ID. So we're only looking within ID one at a time and then ID two at a time. That way we're not mixing up data between different city states. And we're going to generate a new variable called population two. So the good thing here is that we're not going to replace our original population that has the true data. We're just going to create an interpolated data variable, a population, population two. So when we have missing data and we want to infer what that data would look like, we can look at let's say February, we have February 1995, but we don't have January, we can look at what February's looked like to kind of get a guess of what January's may have looked like. And we use interpolate for that. And now we're going to use this command. Uh, so again, sorting through ID, we're going to carry forward population two, and create population three. So let's look at what that looks like. Okay, let's take a second and see why does it not like the carry forward command? So carry forward module to carry forward previous observations. So carry forward will carry values forward from one observation to the next filling in missing values of the previous value. So it must be the case that I don't have it installed on my machine. So whenever that happens, you can just do SSC install carry forward. And let's see if this works to help. And you're going to want internet connection because it's going to be installing it online and it says installation complete. So let's try it again and see if it works. Okay. So now it works. So, I'm just going to comment this. And so if you don't already have this carry forward command installed, feel free to uncomment it and use this code. 
And like we um, just read, it's basically carrying forward from our previous cell, what the data says. And so we're going to bias for ID and carry forward population two, which was our interpolated data set from our other data existing that was next to our missing data. And we're going to create another population three. So now we want to look at what does this look like? What does all of this mean? And sometimes it's helped to, it helps to visualize it. So we had this version where the filled in data represents data that priorly existed. And then when we did TS fill full to create a more balanced panel, we created all this uh, empty data. We used interpolate to basically fill in values from our, for our missing data based on what we had. So you see here we had 112105. We're going to interpolate so that it fills in all those values. And here, see it changes to 114523. And it was missing here, but it's taking the fact that that was the value here, that was the value here, and it's filling it in with that. And so here it's taking not only this value, but it's also taking this value to determine what it would look like. And here, because these two values are the same, these are all the same. Here it's taking again, looking at this value and this value, what it would look like for it to eventually end up down here. And then here we use the carry forward command to basically carry our prior value over into the future in case there were still any missing values. And now we're going to generate a population four. So another variable for population that's going to be the maximum of our population three. And now we're going to, based on our ID, and so like, let me, ugh, sorry guys, let me go back for a second. So this one, we maxed our population three based on ID and year. So based on our unique identifier for city state and our year, we looked at the max of what the population looked like. And then here we're going to um, buy sort our ID and drop if the population four is less than 100,000. So what we're doing here is we're looking only at regions that have a larger population. Um, we want, we're thresholding that basically if your population is less than this, then we're not going to include you as a, um, in our data set. And, you know, decisions like that can be done based on your research question. Here we're looking at um, female homicide rates based on sex services. So there could be some rationale behind the use of sex services in smaller population or rationale behind having at least this much population to have comparable units in our difference in difference. And now we're going to generate our treat treatment date. And so it's treat ERS date. And it's going to be the date minus the ERS date. So ERS date is when the erotic services um, was implemented. And date is whatever date is at that time. And so it's going to create a variable based on treatment date. And if we want to look at it, we can just do order ERS date. So basically, this is saying my date of, it's also order date. It's also order ERS date. So we're saying that our current date minus the introduction of ERS date is negative 143. So it wasn't until one, 143 months later that we had the implementation of ERS from our current date of um, Craigslist. And then we can treat our CL date, create a treatment for CL date, and it's date minus CL date. So if we order CL date, we can see we also want to order 
treat see all day we can see that we're taking our date variable of the date corresponding to the city state from our data set subtracting it by the introduction of Craigslist in that location and now we're going to generate ERS underscore all so it's going to be when our treat ERS date is greater than zero and the treat ERS date does not equal a dot so I'll just make a comment here that when we use exclamation equals it refers to does not equal so this is when ERS is in place it's when it's greater than zero and it's not equal to a dot and now if you've read the paper or skimmed it you you'll see the specification creates dummy variables for if ERS was in place 10 for more than 10 months and less than 10 months there's a dummy code for that and the you know institutional reason why that's the case is because uh, they find that it took about 10 months for ERS to become a common practice and use and uh, create a thickening in the market for sex workers and they also do falsification robustness checks looking at six months after the implementation of ERS on Craigslist and nine months to show that they're not just using 10 months to find significant results but there's still significant results at those time periods as well it's just they have the institutional knowledge to show that 10 months is really when the use is widely spread for sex services for people on the market that didn't have access to these online portals to now be able to use it and so we can generate that so it's equal to treat underscore ER state if it's greater than zero but if it's less than or equal to 10, so this is a dummy for if it's 0 to 10, and it shouldn't equal a dot, then we can generate 10 plus, so that's when it's more than 10 months. If it's greater than 10, and now we can do Craigslist if the treatment Craigslist is greater than 0, so we don't want it when Craigslist wasn't in place in that city state, we want it once Craigslist was introduced. And then we can do one for Craigslist dummy for 10 plus months. Sorry, take that back. This is 10 months or less, the dummy, because we were saying treatment CL date is greater than zero. So Craigslist has been introduced, but it's been less than 10 months of its introduction. And this, then this one is the 10 plus months. And now we're going to create a robustness treatment variable so that we can run through them later on in the regression. Uh, and as written here by either Scott or Greg, you know, so that 10 months choice isn't scrutinized. So whenever you're doing a difference in difference and there's some arbitrary choice that you've made, something that could have been chosen differently and it's something that, you know, has some freedom uh, on your part as a researcher for deciding, you do want to always use falsification tests for a different value to make sure that your results are not only just standing because of the value you chose and then not only do you have your rationale for the use of that value but you also have proof and evidence that your results are robust to some other arbitrary value chosen instead so here he makes a six months dummy six months prior six months over and then the nine months dummy and then he also does a third 12 month dummy Okay, now we want to drop cities that seem to not be reporting for some time period. So we're going to create this generate one equals one. And it's literally just a variable that equals one all the way through the data set. And we're going to bisor our city and state name and create a count variable. And it's going to be totaling the one. So what that means is for every city state combination in our data set, we're going to create a total one. So it's going to sum up the ones. So if we look at that, for this city state, we have 4,315 ones, 
right? For this one, we only have 156. We only have 144. So it really represents that's the amount of times that this city state is shown in the data set, regardless of time. So we're going to drop if the count is less than 168 and drop if the count is greater than 180. So that deleted a lot of observations. We deleted about 15,000 observations there. And now we're going to sort our ID day and by sort based on our ID and generate a linear trend. We can do that by just putting for each ID, generate a trend, which is underscore N. So for every key entry, and remember each key entry is based on the month year combination. And so because we're doing it based on ID and we already know that each ID observation, like this is one, two, three, is a month year combination, we can just do underscore N to create that linear trend. So the trend, here it is. Okay, so now I'm not gonna go into too much detail with this chunk because it's really just minutia and a little bit tedious of specific to this code, what needs to be done to clean the data for um, each variable. So this is just, for instance, replace female all equals zero if female all equals double equals a dot replace female all um, per capita equals zero if it's equal to a dot stuff like that um, here we're just doing female all zeros divided by population three which remember uh, if you remember is the interpolated as well as the carry forward times 100,000 so we're taking it out of the per capita Sorry, I take that back. We're creating it into a per capita. So we're saying all female zeros per 100,000 in the population. And then here we're taking the ln, so we're taking the log of the per capita to get it into a rate. And here we're taking the quartic root, and here we're doing the inverse hyperbolic sign. So these are just different transformations if you have zeros or negative values in your data. As you guys are all aware, you can't take the log of a zero, you can't take the log of a negative number. So these are some transformations you can make to get almost the same, same thing, uh, but by taking care of the fact that there are zeros and negative numbers. Um, you know, you may have read in your textbooks or seen prior people add a one. So if it's negative, if it's a negative number, you can add a one, but that really does kind of change the value. And so in order to avoid changing the, you know, base value, these transformations are probably more recommended. And there's a bunch of different papers, um, that you can read in regards to this, um, in econometrics. So we can run those. Again, this is just more cleaning. Okay. So once we do that cleaning for all these different variables of interest, we can come back and look at this regression plot. So this is really important. If you're ever going to be writing a difference in difference paper or problem set, wherever it may be, you're going to want to know how to make a din dynamic diff and diff plot. It's called different things depending on who you're talking to, but that's what I've seen it referenced to most commonly. And basically what that's doing, it's taking our lagged data and our lead data. So what happened prior to treatment, what happened post treatment, and it's taking that time period and multiplying it by the treated unit to see how much of an impact treatment had. So it's similar to what a parallel trends would be, but it's a different way of showing it. So what we want in our pre period 
is everything to look at the zero line. And I'll show you, you know, graphically what that looks like when we run this. But what that means is that being treated in the pre period shouldn't have an impact on the outcome. So that's why, you know, the coefficient should be close to zero. And the confidence interval band should be at least touching zero. But once the treatment does come into uh, place, you don't want your treated states to be zero anymore. You want it to have some kind of an impact. Otherwise, you're not showing a treatment effect. And so that's what this kind of a graph is able to show us. So you have to create this manually and you're going to do generate lag equals one equals zero replace lag one equals one if your treat date is less than or equal to zero or it's greater than negative 10. Now we're going to do lag two. Uh, generate lag two equals one if treater date is less than or equal to negative 10. So you start here, right? Because you'd only put greater than. So now you have to include the negative 10 and the treat date is greater than negative 20, and then you keep doing that. So they, they used increments of 10 here. And our final lag six is if the treat date is less than or equal to negative 50. So if you remember, this was just our date minus the ERS date. And now we're going to relabel our lag so that it makes sense once we graph it. So lag one is going to be zero to nine months pre, then 10 to 19 months pre, 20 to 29 months pre, 30 to 39 months pre, up until 50 months prior to ERS implementation. Now we're going to generate a difference in difference. It's equal to zero. Replace difference in difference equal to treat date if treat ERS date is greater than zero. What that means is our treatment occurs after treat ERS date equals is greater than zero because it's not just we implement treatment and then the treatment doesn't exist anymore. We implement treatment, treatment starts and then it exists until it's shut down later on if you read in the paper. So anytime where treat ERS date is greater than zero, treatment is in place. So that's our treated period. And we're gonna create our leads in reference to that. So generate difference in difference one equals zero, replace it if DD is greater than zero, but it's less than 10. So that's like 10 months and then 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, all the way up until greater than 70. And we're gonna relabel it. So it could be the case in your example, your research where you have more lag data or than lead data, or you could have more lead data than lag data. And here we see we have more lead data, but you do want a, uh, a decent amount of lag data in order to tell parallel trends or tell the impact of treatment. So then we generate treat equals zero. We replace treat equals one if the treat ERS state is greater than or equal to zero. So we're saying that this is the treat, um, this is the, treatment period for the treated units because treat ERS greater than or equal to zero is only going to happen for the places where ERS was implemented. And like we know from the paper and like I mentioned before, it's going to be implemented at different time periods for different city states. So these treat equals one is not going to be occurring all at one time for one state. Now we're going to bisort ID gen n equals underscore capital N. So we can do help underscore capital N to see what that means. So underscore lowercase n contains the number of the current observation. Underscore capital N contains the total number of observations in the data set. So it's not just for each itemized line, it's for every single thing in the data set. So let's run these now that we've gone over what it means. And we can look at 
what our n looks like. So it's showing we have 180 for ID 1, 178, 180. And now we're going to save this temp file, temp murder data. Now we're going to create a grouping variable, which will be used later on. So we're going to use the temp murder data. We're going to generate number equals one. Remember before we had done one equals one. So we're creating number equals one. We're going to collapse sum number by ERS date. So if we want to remember, it's going to be only including the variables that you have in the by and here. So we wanted to save this temp murder data so that once we did this collapse, we don't lose all this data. That's super important. Suppose you, you know, want to do it without impacting all of this data, you could use a preserve and restore command. And preserve and restore basically will collapse it, do all of these different commands, and then once re you hit restore, it's going to give you back this large data set. So it might be a good idea to use preserve and restore when you're doing things on the fly that way, in case you forget to put the save or whatever it may be, you don't lose all those changes. But that's what not what they did here, so we're just going to go back to what it was. So we collapse the sum based on the ERS date of our number. So basically, we took our erotic services date and we summed how many existed for each date. Now we're going to drop the number and we're going to sort ERS date. And now we're going to generate a group which is equal to underscore n. So for each date, we've created a group now. And that means that it's not going to start at 1 over again when we go to 2006. It's going to keep numbering it as we go. And now we're going to sort ERS date. And we're going to save our group data. Now we're going to go back to our temp data. So here we are. We're going to sort our ERS date. We're going to merge our ERS date using the group data that we just made. OK, so here's our merged data with our group. And we're going to drop the underscore merge. Now we're going to time series set on ID, which is our city, state, location, and the date. And we're going to save our temp murder once again with that merged in group variable. And now finally, we're going to, you can put use temp murder dot data, but we already had it loaded in. So we, we don't really need to do that. But if you're going to pick up later on, it's good to have this in your code. And we can finally begin our analysis and regressions. So now we're going to go through our regression results and as you remember the dependent variable here is female homicides and we're going to look at it at a few different specifications as listed in the paper and I'm going to be following along this table to do the same fixed effects that they use here and look at our independent variables of the first 10 months and the post 10 months. So our first regression is going to be xi, xi represents that we're going to create variables that don't exist already. I'll explain more on that later. We use xt reg because this is a fixed effects model, so we want xt. Our dependent variables, female all for all female homicides per capita. I date, ERS 10 months, ERS 10 plus, cluster, ID level with fixed effects. So I dot date means that we're going to create an indicator variable for the date. And right now, if we look at it, the date is structured in year month. And we basically want 
a indicator like one, two, three, four, all the way for each different ID number and year month combination. And since we don't already have that indicator created, instead of manually doing it, which would take a long time, we can use this XI and it'll create an I dot for us in the regression. And ERS 10 months, if you remember from the paper or earlier, we made that. It's a dummy variable just saying that ERS had been introduced for 0 to 10 months, and then this one is greater than 10 months dummy variable. And cluster ID is just a better way to normalize our standard errors. If you remember Card and Kruger, we used comma R for heteroscedasticity. Here we're going to be clustering because instead of having a repeated cross section, here we have a panel with multiple different ID units at different points of time. So we need to cluster our standard errors at the ID level because of that. And we use XTREG coupled with fixed effects here. If you run the XTREG command and you don't put FE, it won't give you a fixed effects regression. And you this only works because earlier we time series set the data with our location and date, so you have to do that prior. And we can run this and see what it looks like. It's going to take a few seconds. Here we can see it's loading. And see it's created an indicator for I date and just a reminder when we have an indicator it's always going to omit one group and here it omitted the first category which seems like it's 420 here it's omitted it yeah and the rest are remaining we only care about these two variables of interest and we can compare it to the paper we get negative 0 0.007 and that's this one and here we get negative 0 0.018 but we round it because of the seven here so it becomes a nine and it's also significant we find that here whereas this one's not significant and we can outreg to this using craigslist dot text because we want it to create a latex table and <clears throat> and we can do comma replace because it's the first time we're making it. And this is important. In order to avoid having to create a table with all these different indicator dates and then manually delete it, which will take time, let's just only keep our two variables of interest, which is ERS 10 months and ERS 10 plus. And we can create a title, column title, saying city, month, year, Fix effects. We can run that command. Now we can try running our second column, which is city, month, year, and state year. So if we remember, date was already in a month year format, but we don't have a variable that's in a state year format. So we're going to have to think about how we're going to implement that. So we copy everything as was, but now we're going to add i.stateName interacted with i.year and then keep the same dummy for ERS 10 months or less, ERS 10 months plus, and we're going to cluster it at the ID level as before. So we're going to try to run this. And it's going to be able to run all the way up until the interaction here because my matrix size is too small. There's too many state year interactions and it, my version of Stata cannot handle that because it can only go up to 800 for the matrix size. So in order to still be able to run this regression, I'm just going to sample the data. And if you're not familiar with the sample command, we can look at what it is. So it's drawing a random sample. And we can do different kinds of specifications like by sample by certain group variables. And whatever number you put here is a percentage. It's going to sample that percentage. So for instance, if we do sample 10, then that'll draw a 10% sample. So we're going to do sample 2. And we're going to do by 
state name and year because that was a problem. There's too many state name year interactions. And once we sample that, we're going to try running the regression again. And we're going to get results. They're not going to be consistent with what's in the paper because the paper has an entire sample. We're just taking a, a small random sample of, um, you know, 2% of the state year years in our um, data. But this is just to show you what it looks like to do an interacted fixed effects on the fly using this XI and this interaction. Another thing that's important, like whenever you're taking a sample for your homework or for your papers, so you want to get uh, reproducible results, you want to set the seed. So I set it to one, two, three, you could set it to one, you could set it to 400, you could set it to whatever you want. But setting the seed basically just says that it's going to draw from the same values the next time. So if I wanted to reproduce this sampled estimate regression, I'm going to be able to do that if I set the seed. If I don't set the seed, it's going to take a random sample every time I tell it to sample, and it's going to give me different regression results. So it's something, something to keep in mind. And then if we look at our third column, we have city, month, year, state, year, and population fix effects. So let's try to run that one. XT reg, F all PC, I dot date for the month year, I dot state name times, I dot year. Uh, then we're gonna do pop three, which is our population with the interpolation that we talked about earlier. 10 months, ERS 10 plus. Again, clustering it at the ID level and fixed effects. So let's see if this is able to run okay. It ran fine. One thing that I forgot to do here is that if you want a, uh, a table to look at later for this replication, you are going to want to put out reg 2 using Craigslist, but you're going to want to do append. So it appends to the current table, again, keeping only the stuff that we want. And this column title can be city, month, year, state, year, fix effects. Um, you know, the cleanest way to do this is to have this separate section where you have yes, no, or I've seen people do check marks as an X's. Um, but for now, you can just do this to help keep track of what you've done. And we can do the same thing here. And just change it to add population. And here we can compare our results. Again, it's not going to be anything the same because we're using a random sample rather than entire data. And we haven't even told it to sample like a balanced sample from having a lot of IDs that are 10 months plus or 10 months prior. If I if we do that, then it ends up omitting this. So we just based it off of the state year combination. And now we're going to skip over these other columns here because we realize the matrix size is too big or not big enough to use. And we're just going to do, I'm going to do one example of a robustness check and one example of a falsification test. But in order for not to run too long and for brevity, I'm not going to go over each and every column. You guys feel free to like rerun this um, and also reach out to me if you have problems when you're rerunning it if you want to do every specification. And the main thing I want to do is the event study plot, which is also referred as the dynamic diff and diff. So for the robustness, let's just do a regression. If you remember, we made variables. And I'm not going to do the state and year interaction. I'm just going to do it like this. 
and remember we made the six month variable so if it was ERS was introduced six months or less or ERS was introduced six months or more and this was just to show that the arbitrary choosing of 10 months was not in order to just get significant results but it actually had institutional knowledge and if we try to run a model with six months we still see a significant result. So I'm actually going to have to go back to use temp because remember I had sampled the data and then rerun this and now it's going to take a second because we don't want to run this robustness check with a sample. We want to run over the whole thing to show that this is still significant the six plus and we could do it again with 12 months and nine months like they did but I'm just doing this for brevity and our falsification test that we can run is we can use a different dependent variable that shouldn't have been affected by the treatment of ERS introduction and see if we get a significant ERS 10 plus ERS 10 months so let's try a regression using a dependent variable of female homicide by one's acquaintance. So if we're saying that they're getting a homicide by their acquaintance, we're basically making a statement or assumption. We're not going to do this interaction because it gives us some problem because of the matrix size. We're basically making an assumption that this is not a sex worker with their client. This is somebody that they actually know. And so having the introduction of this ERS services on Craigslist shouldn't have an impact on the female homicide rate for acquaintances. And ERS 10 months is what I want. So this is gonna take a second. Okay. And so here we see non-significant, non-significant for both 10 months when we are using a dependent variable of acquaintance. And they use other falsifications as well, such as male homicides, so homicide rate that also shouldn't be changing. And now we can do the COF plot for this. So if we do COF plot, that's going to be the coefficient plot from this regression. We're going to do keep and we're going to add all of these lags but we're gonna reverse the order because the order of it does matter here and we have to type these ones out manually and we're gonna want to get an X label because we had created those labels prior saying we want zero to nine months prior to be equal to this number and so on and so forth. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a Y line at zero. We always wanna do this because we want, remember our pre-treatment to be coefficient to be close to zero. We want it to be vertical as opposed to horizontal and we can change the color of our box to white. And we can give it a title, female homicides for 100,000. And we can even do a note saying something like model estimated with OLS. So now if we run these two, we're not going to get, remember, the same coefficient plot from the paper because we didn't give the state by year interaction because of the matrix size. But let's let this run for a second. So we also want to do actually
usually we want to do a line as well for when treatment occurs but it doesn't have it listed for this so let's just look at where that would be we would have that right here so this is 10 to 19 months pre this is 0 to 9 months post and remember all of these coefficients are in reference to the omitted lag that we did which was lag 1 so 0 to 9 months pre and as we can see here before ERS 10 plus months our coefficients are for the most part 0 but once we get to the treatment they've decreased significantly. So female homicides per 100,000 in the population show a decrease after treatment. So this is a good visual to be able to see that. And I would say definitely if you're ever going to be using a different diff for homework or for your research, you're definitely going to want to be able to know how to use this. And if you have any more questions or concerns on this part or any other part that we covered, I know it was a lot, but thanks for following along. And I hope this was helpful. Um, feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns, but that's all we have for today for this session. And yeah, thanks guys.